Welcome to this brief description of the Built Bridge Artist on Call program. Uh, this is a uh, voice thread and you will hear comments on some slides, videos, and then some of the pictures will just move through at about six seconds each. So this should answer most of the questions you have regarding the program, at least make you familiar. And if you have questions, you can email in Corbett at buildabridge.org. The Artist on Call program of Build a Bridge is a global network connecting artists and organizations from anywhere to everywhere, meeting the needs of disenfranchised communities around the world through art making. Many creative people, whether they're creative artists of uh, any type, music, drama, dance, visual arts, or social workers with a creative understanding, nurses, uh, community development people, uh, church workers who want to engage art making can be a part of the Artist on Call program where we respond to the needs of local areas both in crisis situations as well as community development uh, that is sustainable through a long-term relationship or partnership with a local organization. From a, a creative um, person uh, perspective or a creative artist perspective who wants to be an article, uh, artist on call, we have a number of requirements or uh, guidelines that guide us in selecting the person. The first is the ability to deal with difficult environments and you'll see some pictures of uh, people living in those and I'll give an explanation. Uh, there should be the ability to be creative in working with a scarcity of artistic resources using what can be found locally. The artist is trained in therapeutic art modalities, community development and in crisis management to deal with aspects of trauma and uh, broken environments. By and large, this is a uh, service opportunity in which uh, the creative person wants to make a difference but has the ability to raise their own funds and pay their own expenses. In most of the areas where we work with the types of young uh, or under-resourced organizations, uh, they seldom will have the resources to pay. Occasionally we'll be able to write grants, and, but, but that really cannot be expected. Uh, we, we want the type of person who is proactive and has the ability to raise their funds and pay their own expenses. More and more second, second language skills are required. Uh, we've been in places where Spanish is quite frequently used in Latin America, parts of Africa that use French or Kiswahili and uh, other languages. So we do uh, look for people with second language skills, but it's not always required, uh, particularly from uh, a trainer's perspective, but, the, uh, but a second language skill is a plus. We like for people to be prepared to leave on a one month notice. Uh, sometimes, uh, for example, after the Haiti earthquake, we responded. Uh, we were able to plan for three months because we are often not first responders, but second responders that deal with uh, trauma, particularly the trauma that children face and working with environments. And so we don't consider ourselves first responders, and so therefore we have a longer lead time. And yet we want people to be trained, uh, funded, and ready to go so that when there is an opportunity, uh, one knows that they can uh, respond quickly. This also includes uh, working around work schedules and family schedules. Uh, and some of you may want to know about the length of the experiences, and those, the length can be anywhere from two weeks to up to a year. And as I mentioned, fundraising is required. The core philosophy is, or conceptual framework, is what we call the world as it could be. And we want to see transformed communities. In this image, uh, children in Mathari Valley in Kenya drew an initial image called the world as it could be, which was after a fire and gang violence and uh, many difficult things within this informal settlement, often called a slum, where children live in extreme poverty. But when we ask them to draw a picture of the world as it could be, you can see this image. And there's a, uh, uh, you can see here that there's a, uh, 
a nice almost like an ice cream truck uh, there are nice cars and paved roads uh, I think this is a nice playground and you have a swimming pool and so the children themselves recognized what they wanted uh, in the world as it could be and so our purpose is to help th uh, children and communities to bring about the world as it could be as they see it not necessarily as we see it using their own local resources we often work with uh, children and communities who are victims of violence uh, this particular image was drawn uh, through a class with a child trauma specialist after the Rwanda genocide uh, took place in 1994. We were there a year later working with uh, children and training uh, community workers in how to deal with trauma in children. And we often use uh, the visual arts, which is, uh, al which is also used by visual art therapists, as a way to externalize the internal. Many children are not able to express their emotions. Uh, their experiences or their feelings and so this is a way to uh, help the children uh, say what they would like to say may want to say and then the uh, any therapist we have or other external work is able to be done following that so we do work in areas of conflict and war where uh, and also uh, family violence In our mission, we talk about working with the most vulnerable in the toughest places of, world, of the world as a result of poverty. Now, many children live in poverty, and they become uh, survivors of poverty. Uh, we often see them at first when we look at, at terms of being victims, but they are survivors of poverty. And um, as a result of their experience of poverty, uh, they are malnourished, undereducated, and often uh, suffer from trauma. I should make a comment that not all ch children basically are quite resilient and so we approach every situation believing that people are resilient but there are some folks that uh, do have a very difficult time and are not as resilient as others and we work with those as well. Particularly in Philadelphia and other parts of the United States uh, but also in uh, other countries in Latin America and Africa, which are the uh, foci geographical areas for our work. Uh, children often live uh, homeless or on the street, and so those that are resilient uh, tend to work themselves out. Others uh, are quite traumatized by the situation. Many are uh, involved in survival sex, uh, and so working with local communities uh, we're able to help design programs uh, and ongoing experiences that assist the children in finding hope and healing for their lives always with a concern for their economic development and work readiness uh, in learning skills that would help them toward the future we have a model called the hope model which talks about both will pay willpower and way power which is a part of our uh, work in communities As second responders, we will often respond in areas of catastrophe. Uh, this image is from Haiti, and we'll have a case study in a moment where you can see other pictures. Uh, this orphanage was devastated by the earthquake in Haiti, and our role was to assist that local organization in um, placemaking or providing a safe place uh, for the children to play and to learn. As a response to the consequences of poverty, uh, Bilderbridge established our volunteer program called Artist on Call, which means that our artists and other creative people, whether they be, as I mentioned earlier, uh, social workers, health workers, uh, community workers, and religious workers, is that they are prepared to respond to a crisis and to bring hope and healing to the most vulnerable in the most difficult places of the world.
a core principle of Artist on Call is creating safe places. That means uh, working with the uh, children themselves and with the local organizations in designing and uh, looking at what are safe places, not only physically, but also emotionally and spiritually for children to be children, to be safe, and to find hope and healing for their lives. Another role of the Artist on Call is to listen to children um, and to mentor. Mentoring, we know, does not take place in one hour a week or two hours a week, but uh, you're looking at spending a considerable amount of time listening to children through classes, but also after class, to relate with the child and uh, as much as possible uh, the workers who work with the child and the family members as well. And so we want the artist on call to both listen, that means speaking less than 30% of the time, listening 70% of the time, and to mentor through our method of arts, art making as metaphor, where the art making process itself is a metaphor for life. The artist on call is a representative of Build a Bridge. Of course, they represent themselves. But the, uh, the, the partnership that we have, which is often long term, it may be as long as 10 years, a commitment to a local organization or country. And so when you travel uh, under the umbrella of Artist on Call and Build a Bridge, part of your role is to build relationships with the community and its leaders and to connect Build a Bridge in a uh, good way uh, with the local organization. So you represent more than yourself and your skills, but the organization of Build a Bridge. A part of every uh, experience, whether it be a catalytic experience like an arts camp that demonstrates to local communities what can take place, or whether you're there for a specific purpose, uh, we are always there to train and educate, to transfer knowledge and skills so that people have their own capacity and ability and whatever is, uh, they are doing uh, is sustainable. That means that when you leave, something else is going on, and that any project is not dependent upon external resources, whether that be financial resources or in knowledge resources. Through this training, we are able to help build the capacity of the local organization. Uh, in this image was the first experience uh, in Kenya, in Mathari Valley. And there were about uh, 13 uh, Kenyan teachers that came to training and helped with an arts camp. This past year, after f four years, there were 50 such artists, and they conducted their camp with the help of only one expatriate who had been living there for 10 years. So their capacity is being built, and they do it a little differently than what we had probably uh, thought but yet they are designing their own programs with children and operating them under their own resources with some help along the way uh, with uh, external funding from well-wishers. But our desire is that, uh, and, and the philosophy is, that we should not be doing anything for anyone that they can do for themselves. And so we want to approach it from that sustainable and capacity-building approach. Following the earthquake in Haiti in 2010, uh, Builder Bridge was asked to respond to two situations. One was uh, an orphanage, the other was a school, and we also provided uh, training in uh, psychological first aid and arts-based uh, uh, healing for trauma at the North Haiti Christian University. Uh, this is an image of Port-au-Prince and the devastation that took place.
one of the things that uh, a, an artist on call has to be prepared for is living in uh, somewhat uh, sparse and difficult circumstances. Uh, at the school we worked at, uh, we stayed in tents, uh, but the storms came and you can see how much the wind affected the tents, which uh, made it uh, very difficult to sleep at night. And of course the rains came and, and many of the clothes and materials that we had were soaked by rain. So even in the best situations where you prepare for anything, uh, we have to be flexible and prepared and be uh, able to adjust to different environmental situations as they come our way. These three artists on call lived in a uh, an orphanage for a week. Uh, there was no running water, uh, no working toilets, and they had to prepare their own food. And they did quite well. All, uh, at least two of them, uh, actually all three had uh, experiences living uh, internationally and were able to cope quite well and to work with the children to uh, do some place making and create an, uh, a nice environment, a safe place uh, geographically or physically for the children to uh, live and play, but they also were able to run programming for a week uh, for the children who were often very much traumatized, some of them, uh, by the buildings. One of the buildings had fallen and killed one of the children in the orphanage, and their own dormitory uh, had been condemned and, and had to be rebuilt, and they were also living in tents. So it was a uh, uh, somewhat, uh, could be a qu somewhat stressful situation. But because of their experience and training, they were able to assist and do quite well in that environment. As you'll see here, there's a young girl jumping across uh, the uh, threshold. And part of our model uh, in creating a safe place is, is developing a ritual and a, a creative safe place. And that always has to do with developing a threshold. Uh, teaching uh, welcome uh, rituals for children as well as uh, value-based uh, uh, motto that the children create themselves uh, so that they can create in safety, uh, both, as I've said before, create in safety uh, physically safe, emotionally safe, and also spiritually safe. At the end of every ritual is always, and every week or um, camp or catalytic event as we call them, uh, it, there's always a celebration of the work that uh, the children have done and their families and the community. And you're, you're seeing here in the slides that follow a celebration of cleaning up this environment, uh, painting a, a, a mural using very sparse uh, paints that were available locally, as well as creating a movable sculptor garden. Hello, I am Maji Ross. I am an artist on call, and I'm also a administrator with Build a Bridge. I recently took a trip to Haiti, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what it means to be an artist on call. Uh, Haiti was an incredible experience for me. It was a really very beautiful experience. It gave me a chance to do on the ground work, training uh, teachers, and uh, working with students. So the process taught me a lot about abundance and the lack thereof. It taught me about preserving what we have. It taught me a lot about flexibility and about being prepared at a moment's notice. It taught me how to take a bath in a bowl of water this big. Um, it taught me how to appreciate people's kindness. Um, it taught me even more about compassion, although I thought I knew a lot about compassion, but I really know 
a lot more about compassion. So Haiti, Haiti was a really, really important growing experience for me. But as an artist on call, it required everything, everything that I have. It required me to sink on my feet. It required me to use every bit of training that I have. Um, and it required, it required me to uh, empathize, to put myself in the space of teachers who are just learning how to use the Build a Bridge model. It was a good experience. In 2011, uh, Build a Bridge was invited to bring a team to work uh, in the red light district of Bangkok. And there was uh, a, a, an organization that worked with uh, survivors of uh, the sex trade as well as those involved in the uh, sex trade itself there. Uh, they had a new building that was seven stories, which they were going to house and provide alternative housing uh, for the women as well as training. And the seventh floor, which opened up to the skies and overlooked the red light district, they wanted to put in a reflective prayer garden. So our team was asked to come uh, create and design a prayer garden on a theme as well that would involve plants as well as a small mural for the space. And the pictures that follow will, I think, will be self-explanatory in terms of what it looked like. Uh, and there were five. Um, artist on call who went as a team and they ha all happened to be from Eastern University in the Arts and Transformation program and they spent a week in very hot and humid weather uh, designing and painting a mural that told the story of restoration. Also in 2011, um, Builder Bridge was invited to work with women in war zones in Bukavu, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and to work with uh, women who are survivors of the sexual violence there uh, in eastern Congo. And we worked at Ponzi Hospital uh, with 125 women uh, following our images and voice messages from some of the artists on call that participated. So during this week, we were work I was working with women who are currently undergoing multiple surgeries for fistula, um, and we were doing dance, and in some ways we were doing dance for exercise, and good, it's good for our bodies um, to expand the way we move, and uh, we were also relating how we move. When we, when we walk softly, we were tiptoeing, and I asked the women, um, when do they tiptoe, and they said when they're afraid. And so we talked about what we do to, in a response when we're afraid. And so we're really connecting um, their body awareness, their somatic awareness, to their emotions, and then again to their cognition, to understand their emotions. Uh, my name is Shem Ogweno Akini, and uh, I'm from Nairobi, and uh, I joined Builder Bridge to, uh, to come to Congo and to teach about photography. Everything went well. I worked with the women at Warzone, 
and uh, I'm happy they, they got the skill of uh, photography and uh, in a short a minute, uh, like after four days, they could now take good photography and also we made a presentation with what they took. I'm happy for that. Thank you. A number of creative uh, art educators, uh, artists and others work in Philadelphia where uh, Philadelphia has worked for the past eight years with uh, the city's children in transition, mostly in transitional homes but also in other places and following are a few pictures to give you an idea of the things that we have done through our summer camp, Artology, which is uh, a uh, a summer camp for art and biology as well as programming that takes place in music, dance, drama, visual arts, culinary arts and other art forms in the uh, located in the system itself. In other words, the, the artist goes to the location and works with the children building relationships, mentoring, teaching art skills on a regular basis. So what are the next steps if you're interested in the artist on call of Build a Bridge? Well, the first thing for you to do is to express your interest. Uh, you can do that by emailing aoc at buildabridge.org and we will respond to you. We do have a process for um, uh, registering as well as resume and interview process that takes place. But your first step is just to send an email and, and maybe attach your resume and uh, tell of your experience and, and why you would like to be a part of that. The second step is, is always the most difficult and that's to make a commitment. Uh, a commitment to um, make sure that you are uh, you have the time frame to commit to the change that needs to take place uh, to make a commitment as we said to uh, think of the funding that may take place, the time off from work. All of those are commitment issues and if you cannot, that doesn't mean you can't be prepared for a time that you can, but just know that you'll be asked to make those particular uh, points of, we might say, self-sacrifice or sacrifice in order to uh, make a difference in the lives of children who suffer uh, and who are looking for hope and healing in some of the most difficult situations of the world. A third step is to prepare through training and we offer training through our Builder Bridge Institute uh, annually in June and then there are other trainings that are provided for throughout the year on ground and online to help you prepare. Once you are placed or there is a, 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 a trip or experience that needs to take place in another country there's also orientations to the culture, orientations for issues of safety, how to work with communities. So there's a, a fairly extensive uh, preparation which is good. Our folks are, seem to be well prepared and uh, their reports and our assessments is that they felt prepared for their work. So we want you to be as, as prepared as possible for the task that may come ahead. So we look forward to hearing from you.